Hi everyone, good morning. I apologize for that uh, short little technical issues. Um, this is the reason why I actually miss doing webinars uh, offline than the, other than, you know, uh, being able to skip all this technical issue. I guess the other thing is really to, to be able to hear all of you interact and laugh together, right? Um, because sometimes, you know, when I like to track some, you know, lame jokes when I'm talking, right? And the funny thing is, when we're doing a webinar, I'm essentially just talking to myself. So nobody is laughing with me. So can I please, uh, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, cool. See, again. Um, okay, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you, FSM1, for inviting me to speak today. Uh, and I, I was saying to myself just now, you know, this is the whole reason why I miss doing uh, live, um, you know, uh, seminars rather than, you know, having to do webinars because I'm essentially talking to myself. So, and sometimes I like to, you know, throw in some lame jokes in between, whether you get it or not, at least if I can see your face, I know whether you're laughing or whether it's funny or not, right? Then I can go home and quick and practice my jokes. Uh, so, what I want you guys to do is, uh, since there's a chat function, feel free to ha-ha-ha in the chat so that I know my jokes are still funny, okay? Now, um, I am very well aware uh, that today uh, I am actually the only lady speaker here. And... Um, being a lady is really, you know, difficult, la, susa a bit, la. you know why? Because um, ladies typically tend to be more, you know, long-winded, right? So that's why when I was told that uh, I was given 30 minutes to talk about uh, unique investment opportunities on Bursa Malaysia, the first thing that I did on my part was to be very, very mindful of the number of slides I put in. Because uh, if some of you here have seen some of the webinars that I've conducted, it can go on uh, for quite a long one, no. <laughs> but I hope some of you uh, do enjoy, you know, the learning uh, from, uh, you know, some of the, the value that I try to bring uh, to the table to all of you. Okay, so it's a, a, a you know, very... Uh, happy Sunday morning and I'm Saturday morning and I'm very, very glad that, you know, there are so many of you here who is willing to get up early, right? Um, this slide has actually been covered uh, by Shu and uh, I just wanted to highlight one point, uh, which is the fact that Trade Plus, uh, which is actually just a brand name, uh, ultimately we are still employees of Afin Huang Asset Management. The issuer and the manager of the ETFs are still uh, Afin Huang Asset Management. And it's since 2017, all right? So Trade Plus only stepped into the picture in end 2017. And ever since then, we have listed nine ETFs on Malaysia over the span of three, uh, three to four years. And um, I'm so glad that, you know, just now Shu gave me, uh, gave Trade Plus some free advertisement because uh, the funds that he highlighted, a couple of them are actually from Trade Plus, which today I'm going to talk about gold and new China. Okay, so before I actually begin to talk about, you know, what are the unique investment opportunities there are in the Malaysian market, one thing that I like to do is to debunk this myth, debunking the liquidity myth. Why? Because Every time, you know, since 2017, I've been going out there doing seminars, doing webinars, telling people that, hey, you know, buy ETFs, buy ETFs. Um, but very much, uh, you know, uh, uh, very, very often people will come to me and say that, hey, are you sure, Ali Ju? I can get in, I cannot get out, you know. But my question is, why? Why is it that you can get in and you cannot get out? So I think um, what happens is that a lot, a lot of investors who are probably stock investors will always use the trading volume as the gauge as to whether a stock is liquid or not. And that's perfectly correct. But it is not right for ETFs. Why? Because ETFs have market makers to provide liquidity. So all issuers in Malaysia, yeah, all issuers in Malaysia do appoint market makers to actually provide liquidity in the market. So what do we mean by providing liquidity? It means that this same seller, which is an investment bank, will always put up a bid price uh, and a quote price. And some of you, right, um, who have been monitoring the, the ETF market may be looking at this screen, right? And you'll be wondering, for example, the second line, AXJ REITs ETF. Why is there a big quantity of 100,000 
um, at 103 and 100,000 at 104. Then you'll be asking, right, why can't these two person meet, you know, and, and just take each other's price, right? Um, um, why is that, you know, that always this queue, these two person can never see eye to eye like that, right? And can, can never trade. Um, and let me tell you, the reason is because these two quotes are actually put up by market makers, which means that this one single party, which is the market maker, will buy from you if you're holding this REIT ETF at 103 and will eventually sell to you if you're interested to buy at 104. And then again, some of you will say, but 100,000 uh, quantity is quite small. But let me tell you that ETFs is the same as unit trust because they are open-ended, which means that as and when there is insufficient inventory in the market, these market makers will come to Afin Huang to create more units and then more units can be sold in the market. So this 100,000 is not just uh, you know, the, the number of units that is currently in circulation and that's currently uh, held by the issuer. In fact, some of our, our you know, uh, market makers use this algo. So every time this 100,000 is, is taken up by somebody, it gets replenished. So um, yeah, it is somewhat like a structured uh, warrant where they also have um, market makers behind, all right? So let's dive into gold. So what are some of the ways to invest in gold? So before I want to talk about how this gold ETF uh, actually works, I want to talk about how um, you as an investor today can access to gold as an asset class, right? So first thing first, a lot of us here like to hold because we want to see, right, gold is a tangible product. You want to be able to see that physical metal that you can hold in your hand. But do you ever realize that buying and holding physical gold can come at a very, very expensive spread? So let me just give you an example here, right? The spread can go up uh, to as high as 44% which means that the minute uh, you buy gold at 328 ringgit, and if you want to sell it, you have, you're only receiving 227. Of course, this is an extreme case, but I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is I'm trying to compare a one gram, uh, you know, a PEM gold uh, that you can actually get your hands on in the market. Right, um, you know, some of you may then say, you know, I can also walk to Pokong, but if you actually calculate the spread of Pokong, uh, you know, the gold that you buy from Pokong, I am pretty sure it's not going to come very cheap, okay? And the second, um, you know, thing that, uh, um, you know, another way that you can buy gold is some of you like to open, you know, uh, a bank account, a gold deposit account with any banks in Malaysia. I think today there are many, many banks uh, in Malaysia, in fact, if, if not all, uh, would already have this gold deposits account. And the spreads are not that bad. Uh, so that's why I'm going to give you an example of what Maybank quotes on their prices. These are all transparent. You can go to web Maybank's website and take a look at it. And the bid ask spread is around 4%. And it may or may not be physically backed as well. So now, after knowing these two most popular options to buy gold, um, you know, you probably probably be thinking, you know, mm, but I also want to hold the gold. Like, you know, some people like that, that, that. That thing right so there is no right or wrong in making this decision because it's entirely up to you it's, it's up to you in terms of your preference etc right and um the, the third point is the trade plus shara gold etf which i'm gonna uh you know uh, dive in deeper later and if i take um this price that i quote uh, uh taken from yesterday's uh, uh not yesterday uh thursday's trading price uh, our market makers were quoting 235 and 238 Bear in mind, this is just the market maker's quote. But because for the gold ETF, there are sufficient retailers' uh, interest. So there are people who has come in to narrow this spread to, I think it was at about 236 and 238. So the spread really, really depends on how many participants there are. But market makers, on the other hand, are still committed to quoting a decent spread because it, the minute they are not they are indecent, okay? The minute that, you know, they try to do something funny, uh, we as the ETF issuer will then go after these market makers, okay? So um, why should you then consider investing in gold? You know, I can actually do a lot of uh, slides, right, to kind of like 
confuse you, right? And, and just prove to you the fact that, you know, you should start investing in gold. But I don't want to do that because, you know, the minute I do that, right, I can talk for two hours, you know. I, I'm sure, you know, none of you want, want to hear me for two hours because I think, you know, otherwise, uh, for if it's prolonged, I'm afraid that you think that, you know, I'm your mother trying to nag at you to buy gold, all right? So that's not the whole purpose of that. So why investing in gold? So there are basically three reasons why we think one should invest in gold. Uh, first of all, it's diversification. Second of all, it's safe haven asset. And third of all, it's a source of long-term return. So why is it you know, um, important for diversification? So today we all know that diversification is all about us trying to mix things of different um, you know, risks, of different movements into one basket. So if let's say, right, if all these asset classes are your fruits, okay, you don't want to put all apples in one basket, lah, right? You want to be putting in apples, oranges, whatever lah, that is, lah, some sour, some sweet, some, you know, whatever. Lah, okay, so when you do that, then you do, uh, that's what we call diversification. So gold typically in, um, you know, historically has been proven to be able to diversify itself because of its low correlation with the other asset classes, which means that when the equity markets goes up, right, gold tend to move in the opposite direction, which is go down. So when there is, you know, huge systemic risk in the market where there's you know, lots of uncertainty um, and, and um, you know, uh, uh, concerns um, in the market, what happens is that this gold, uh, this equities market tend or risk asset uh, will tend to go down, okay, in uh, in terms of return, and gold tend to move in the opposite direction. But what is interesting here is that um, there was a report uh, from World Gold's Council that has actually a chart, right, that shows that um, even though the S&P 500 market could be on an uptrend, and especially if it is like a super bull where it moves, I think, uh, close to three standard deviation away, gold moves in the same direction of the risk asset. And that's why, uh, you know, in the past few years, even though it's a bull market, we have seen gold price climbing up at the same time. Okay, safe haven asset, you know, no need to explain anything because all of you sure, especially if you are like 50 and above, I'm sure you have some gold hidden, you know, under your pillow, girl, under your bed, I don't know where, but I'm sure you have some of this. And this is also the reason why people want to store gold. I'm not sure, right, to be honest, whether Bitcoin will now replace this because, um, you know, uh, in the event of war, right, those old people like to say, my grandmother like to say, you know, keep some gold so that in case you need to run away from the country, you have all this gold that you can pay to whoever to, I don't know, bribe them or pay them so you can leave the country, uh, something along that line. But with Bitcoin, I'm not too sure because people say that Bitcoin is the new goal, right? So, so we, we will uh, wait to see again. Okay? And source of long-term return. So this chart I want to show you um, is the fact that gold prices, um, despite it uh, you know, being a diversifying um, uh, component, it can also deliver you returns as good as some equities market or sometimes you know, close to it. Uh, if you look at the 10-year average return for gold, it has been at 4.1% versus the S&P uh, or rather the MSCI US at 14.7%. And of course, in the recent years, uh, in the past five years, um, gold has done about 12.6%, whereas the MSCI US is up 16.4%. So not too bad a difference yeah, in terms of return. So now let's talk about what is the Trade Plus Sharia Gold Tracker. So one thing good about the Trade Plus Sharia Gold Tracker, as the name suggests, it is Sharia compliant. Why is it Sharia compliant? How did we make it Sharia compliant? The, the reason why it is Sharia compliant is because it invests in physical gold bars, okay? So it's not just buying into gold futures. It's not just uh, buying into a derivative of gold. In fact, we invest in real physical gold bars, a tangible product that we can actually see. Of course, I, we cannot touch, that, right? We can only see in the vault when we visit it. So this particular gold ETF um, actually invests into physical gold bars that are purchased from LBMA-approved refineries. So LBMA is the you know, international standard, the London Bullion Market Association. So these guys actually uh, deem that the gold is you know, like top-notch quality kind of thing, right? So that's why we purchase them only from 
LBMA approved refineries. And then these gold bars do not belong to Afin Huang Asset Management. So don't worry that our fund managers will take all these gold bars that belong to you and run away uh, you know, to another country or to whoever. Because you know that this is a fund structure. There is always a trustee and custodian in place. Right? So the custodian, which is Standard Chartered Bank Singapore, will be the ones custodizing the gold bars. So, um, so, so for those of you who are familiar with the fund concept, uh, you know that some, um, you know, uh, uh, money in the, the funds that we raise have to be deducted for annual management fee, annual trustee fee, etc. So as a result of it, we are not able to hold 100% in physical gold. So um, at this juncture, uh, we, in our prospectus, we do say that it is a minimum of 95% of the NAV will be held in physical gold, which also means there would be some tracking error to expect from it. But if you ask me, this is a hassle-free gold ownership because you can own lots and lots of gold without having to worry where to store it, how to insure it, etc. etc. And the fact that it's Shara compliant, there is also another feature that's very interesting, is the fact that you have the option to redeem physical gold. Okay, because we hold physical goal, we are able to um, pass on this physical goal to you if you are interested to redeem it. However, I need to put caveat here, right? Because um, the option to redeem in physical goal is not uh to uh you know uh to give you like one gram of gold because uh what we do is we actually buy kilo bars, so one kilo per bar. And as a result of that, you need to accumulate 500,000 units, which is roughly equivalent to about 5 kg of gold. 5 kg of gold is not very big, yeah, because um, it's just the size of an iPhone and you can take, you know, but you have to pick it up from our Singapore vault, okay? Put these five uh, bars in your, in your handbag, whatever, and you can walk out, right? A free man, but be careful like, if your handbag is going to snatch, then I think bye-bye already, lah, huh? But this is just an option. So far, we have not seen any uh, investors trying to redeem physical gold. Okay, so just now I mentioned that, like it or not, because it's an uh, ETF um, and I cannot own 100% in gold, and uh, given that I cannot buy everything, right, I need to deduct fees and expenses, there would be some tracking of this. So um, what I've done here is that this fund is created in, um, in quite a unique way because if you are buying the fund at the primary market to create units, you actually pay US dollar and the fund is based in US dollar uh, and the bank chart as well in US dollar. And I've also put down the gold ETF MK equity, which is the gold ETF that is traded and listed on Bursa. So you can see that there is some slight difference in terms of return. There are two factors uh, affecting this. One is, of course, the tracking. The other one is actually your currency. Because when it's traded on Bursa Malaysia, we traded it in uh, Ringgit. Okay. Now, so I know that this is also a very popular question. People will ask me, should I buy gold ETF in Malaysia or should I buy the biggest um, you know, gold ETF in the world, which is GLD? Now, this really depends on your decision. Okay. Because if I stack up the Trade Plus Shara Gold Tracker performance versus the Spider Gold shares, I can tell you the performance is definitely that there is definitely this difference because the the uh, fees that you pay for GLD I think it's only capped at 0.4 percent. Whereas you can see that you know the the TR that you pay uh, for the Trade Plus Shara Gold Tracker is 0.7 percent, which is slightly higher. If, if you can, I mean, you can also say that it's almost double of what you get uh, or what you pay for GLD, but you must also always take into account the other costs that uh, you incur as a result from it. So what are the other costs that you may potentially incur from it? So let's take a look at your transaction costs, right? For example, um, if you want to buy GLD, uh, where are you buying it from? Who are you trading it from? Are you buying it through a broker that a uh, local broker that connects you with a foreign party? Then you will have to be paying double brokerage, right? You have to pay a local broker, you have to pay a foreign broker. Then some of you will say, hey, you know, there are so many uh, uh, international brokers out there that, you know, I can open an account uh, via an app. But have you checked whether these brokers are regulated by SC? Some of you may say, you know, it's fine. They are not regulated by SC, but they are regulated in their respective country. Um, I don't know if you all know the the earlier Luno saga when before they were actually um before they actually had presence in Malaysia, um they uh, or rather licensed by SC 
um, they were also actively selling to the Malaysian market. And what happened was there was one point in time, uh, uh, their, their uh, primary bank was actually uh, told not to disperse payment to uh, the retail investors here. Of course, eventually they still paid, but it took them a while. So there is this danger or risk whenever it comes to trading with a broker that is not regulated in Malaysia. So other than that, right, I want to also bring your attention to what is the currency spread that you'll be paying if you trade the GLD. So like it or not, you when you buy GLD, it's in US dollar and you hold ringgit, right? Unless, of course, you hold US dollar already. If you hold ringgit, you need to convert your ringgit to um, uh, US dollar. How much spread are you being charged on your currency side? You go through a bank, right? And you can go to whoever's, whichever bank's website, look at their rate, the rates that they are quoting you, and you realize that, you know, it's quite a hefty cost uh, after all. Okay. So now after talking about gold, I want to touch a little bit about the new China economy, uh, which, is, uh, which relates to the new China ETF that we have listed on Brisbane Malaysia. So after, you know, the um, Trade Plus Share Gold Tracker, I think the next popular product for us is actually the new China uh, uh, sectors uh, ETF. And um, maybe I can just 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 uh, say this also that, you know, just now I think uh, Shu did mention that uh, I think Trade Plus Share Gold Tracker takes out about close to 40 to 50% of the total trading volume in Malaysia. Uh, if I add up all the Trade Plus ETF in Malaysia, our trading volume can stand from somewhere between 70 to 80% uh, of the entire ETF trading market. Uh, and this is the point because we are very active in going out to investors, trying to educate them and, and teach them, uh, you know, what is ETF and how it is and things like that, right? So if we want to talk about the new China economy, so after talking about gold, right, um, you know, it, it kind of, then uh, think that, you know, gold uh, could be an asset that, you know, you maybe hold a small percentage. So what if I want to uh, go into, into uh, a risk asset um, which has long-term potential? So two things uh, or two countries probably come to your mind, right? First is US. Second is probably China. So China has actually transitioned themselves from being a manufacturing-led economy to now being a consumer-focused uh, or consumer-centric economy. And they have moved along so rapidly, um, you know, in terms of their technology and stuff like that. Because if you've been to China, of course, now we can't travel, right? If you've been to China maybe a, a two to three years back, uh, you can see that the advancement that they actually have uh, in the country itself. And here are some of the, you know, uh, uh, sectors which are now deemed as new China economy. Okay, so there are things like your healthcare, your travel, your beauty, internet, e-commerce, which is a big thing, clean energy, education, and financial services is only limited to insurance because the Chinese are under insured. So no banking in this uh, new China economy. So the key drivers for new China economy, if you ask me, is actually very, very, very apparent. Why? Because um, it is primarily driven by three factors. First of all, it is the rising middle class income, right? If you read a lot of articles, we'll say, you know, every don't know how many seconds or every, I mean, maybe not seconds, but maybe every, um, you know, uh, how X number of minutes or X number of hours a millionaire is born, you know, um, or things like that. And, and you can see that, um, you know, this is also evident if you travel, you know, don't even talk about now, you know, talk about a few years ago when you go to Paris, when you go to, um, you know, uh, London or UK, wherever, and you see these Chinese tourists dominating the shopping scene, right? Because they're so willing to spend. And of course, you know, the fact that they are so willing to spend means their pockets are actually quite deep as well, right? And um, with, uh, coupled with, you know, the high internet penetration, because why do we say high internet penetration? Because today, I think 90 over percent of their population owns a mobile phone, is connected to their mobile phone. And whenever you want to make payment, even if you walk down the street wanting to buy a cup of bubble tea, and you will have to have WeChat pay, you'll need to have, um, you know, uh, I don't know what, what other pay, uh, Alipay and things like this in order to transact. Um, and growth in e-commerce sector, you know, we hear this Alibaba uh, always, always have, you know, um, this this sale, uh, what, 11-11, singles day sale, right? And year on year, they always report the fact that, um, you know, the, the growth uh, per year keeps increasing, okay? Now, someone says waiting for small dips. Now, I think already dip, lah. 
as far as I've seen, it's already, it has already dipped, okay? So maybe you want to continue to monitor and see uh, when is the most opportune time to get in. So why do we now want to invest in the no new economy rather than the old economy? So the old economy is all about you know, manufacturing, it's about banking and things like that. So if you take a look at the S&P New China Sectors, which tracks the new economy versus the S&P China 500 Index, you notice that performance of the new China sectors has uh, outperformed the old economy. And the reason for that is also simple because China is a top-down country, right? So whatever the government say they want to implement, it will trickle down to the economy. And if you can, if you Google it, I think maybe five or ten years ago, Xi Jinping has came out to say that you know, hey, we're moving and focusing on consumption. That's what he say, yeah, not I say, yeah. So that's why, um, you know, we want to or, or we prefer to look into the new China sectors. And if you can take a look at the performance of the Trade Plus S&P New China Tracker, we listed this product in January 2019. And over this uh, past close to you know, uh, two, two and a half years, um, the fund has returned 61%. Okay? And this particular ETF actually invests into, it does not invest into the A shares market. Yeah? So there is no Shanghai Shenzhen stocks. There are only US ADRs, which which, is, which are companies like your Alibaba, Baidu, and stuff. And you also have uh, Hong Kong listed companies. Okay. So I think if I'm not wrong, 70% are Hong Kong listed, 30% are US listed. Okay. So no direct China A access for this ETF. Okay. Again, this product is also, you know, uh, one that we have created a unique whereby at the fund level, you actually uh, need to pay Hong Kong dollar. The base currency of the fund is Hong Kong dollar. Uh, so is the benchmark. And, but, sorry, this is a typo here. It's not Go ETF MK. Yeah. Uh, the, this particular ETF uh, actually trades in ringgit on Bursa Malaysia. Okay, so the difference that you see would be, you know, due to tracking as well as the currency return. So, as I conclude my presentation for these two funds, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the guidance on market making hours, quantity, and spread. So, like I said, every issuer in Malaysia would appoint a market maker to market make their ETF. So, this is a very important fact because this is what we tell our investors. If you want to be buying the ETF at a fair price, try to avoid hours where our market makers are not present because. Most likely, um, you know, if our market makers are not present, the price then depends on supply and demand, and which also means that it is not the fair price, most likely, okay? So what you need to do is you need to take note of these hours. If you want to trade our ETF, yeah, I cannot represent other, other, the other uh, issuers. So you take a look at this, make sure that if you want to trade, try and trade between these hours where our market makers are present. Other than the hours, the other trick that you can see is to look at the buy sell quote, how many lots are they actually quoting? So when you see these lots, you will know that uh, it is our uh, market maker in action. Okay. Now, as one good, uh, very very good practice is before you buy and sell ETF, Bursa has done a fantastic job. They have actually put up, um, you know, a web page that allows you to see IOPV. What does IOPV means? IOPV means um, intraday NAV. Okay, intraday NAV means um, we calculate the NAV of the fund, okay, uh, every 15 minutes. So what you need to do is you need to check. This is the, the example or rather the screenshot from Bursa Marketplace website. You take a look at this IOPV, which is the price, uh, you know, that you, you it is uh, fair, which means your fair, fair value of this particular ETF. Then go to your trading platform and buy it at around this price. Okay, so this is another trick as to how you know whether you are buying it at a fair value or not. So be a smart investor, make an uh, informed decision. So I think, you know, just now it's five minutes before uh, my time is up. I'm done with my presentation. So um, as you can see, you can contact us via different, different uh, methods. Uh, we have tons of information on our website as well as our social media platform. Uh, so with that, thank you very much. Back to you guys, uh, FSM1.